Welcome back to our Run and Bun adventures. Last time we showed you how to get through Brawly and everything leading up to him. And this time we're going to be covering everything through Roxanne, the second gym leader. I plan on making this into a full series, and I'm currently hardcore nuzlocking this game over on my Twitch channel. Check it out if you want to see all of this live. After beating Brawly, your level cap jumps from 21 to 25, which gives you access to Senescorch, Sarina, Houndoom, Girder, Hariyama, Donphan, and most importantly, Octillery. There are definitely more mons that evolve at this point, but this covers a lot of the important ones. There actually isn't a ton between Brawly and Roxanne. In fact, there are only six trainers between Duford and Rustboro, and three mandatory trainers in Roxanne's gym. Most of these trainers are fairly straightforward, with the exception of Twins Gia and Mia, which we'll cover later. Immediately after defeating Brawly, sail back to Petalburg and grab your Woods encounter. This forest is a pretty mixed bag, with a lot of super useful stuff and a lot of disappointing guys as well. The best encounter here is most likely Gossiflor, but Steenie, Shroomish, Deerling, and Chikorita are all really great too. Bellsprout and Weeping Bell aren't fantastic, and Paris is also unfortunate, of course. The cool part about Rustboro Woods, though, is that none of what I just said matters, because you're always going to get the mighty 30% Carnivine. It's seriously trauma-inducing seeing this guy pop up on my screen after over 150 attempts of this godforsaken game. Like, I genuinely feel pain in my soul when I see his smug-ass face after fighting for my goddamn life against Brawly. Are you sure about that? I'm fine with Carnivine. Carnivine's fine. True Gathy. I would take Carnivine right now. Low-key, though, he's really not that bad. He just really pisses me off. Like, look at him. Oh, I hate him. Like I said, most of the trainers between here and Rustboro are straightforward, but Twins, Gia, and Mia are a pretty terrifying double battle. Run and Bun's AI can get a little confusing, even for me who has over 150 attempts of the game, but especially in double battles. Hopefully this example can help because routing doubles is a massive part of this game, and this is the first big one of the run. Basically, the AI chooses which Pokemon to switch in based on a couple of factors. It prioritizes fast KOs over everything, but in double battles this can get a little confusing due to there being more than one Pokemon on the field. Let's say, for example, you KO this Clefairy with an Arbok in slot 2, and a Serena in slot 1. Since the opposing Clefairy was in slot 2, the AI will choose to send in a Pokemon that can outspeed and KO your Arbok, in this case, Abra. The short explanation is that the AI sends in Pokemon to counter on a slot by slot basis. So in slot 1, it will try to counter your slot 1, and same goes for slot 2. Anyway, this fight can be super tricky depending on your box. Senescorch, Sarina, Eldegoss, Grottle, Arbok, and even Big P can be fantastic for this fight. I like to get rid of the Clefairy as fast as possible, and Bug Bite the Dedenny to steal its Citrus Berry if you can safely afford to do so. Abra is super frail, and it can even fall to a spread Razor Leaf from Carnivine and Grottle if they have good enough attack stats. I also like to bring something like a Luxio or a Floppy to resist all of the Togedemaru's moves. This fight can be pretty tough, but with proper knowledge of Run and Bun's Double Battle AI, it's super doable. Once arriving in Rustboro, the man in the house on the left side of the city gives you a Moonstone and an extra Heart Scale, both of which can be pretty useful for Roxanne. You also get access to three more encounters, Rustboro City, Route 115, and Route 116. I'd recommend grabbing your 116 encounter, but both Rustboro and 115 can be delayed if you choose to do so. Lately, I've been fishing on 115 rather than delaying, because I honestly really like a lot of the encounters here. Clamperl evolves into Huntail with a Moonstone in this game, and it's a pretty big help for Roxanne if you don't have an answer to her puppy dog. If you want, you can also delay this evolution until you get a Sunstone, if you want Corvus. Krabby's a great encounter, and often comes to the Roxanne fight as well, and Corfish is also really solid. It's worth mentioning that if you didn't use your Route 110 rare candy for Brawly, you get access to a bunch of level 26 evolutions, including Floatzel, Crawdont, Kingler, Rapidash, Laron, and a few others. Clauncher comes online after Roxanne, Quillfish is of course solid, and I've been a huge fan of Shelter lately. Basculin doesn't evolve until all the way after Flannery, and I honestly have no idea what it offers to the early game. Route 116 is a frustrating one, since it's crucial to have a solid fighting type for Roxanne. The encounter pool here is super diverse, and if you didn't get a Tyrogue or Makuhita from Duford, you really want one of them here. Mana is honestly really solid, and Hatena can be really useful as a synchronized Mon and eventual fairy type. Galar Ziggy's okay, and both Nidorans are solid, with Queen being the weaker of the two in my opinion. Yanma's fine, but it's much weaker here than if you got it on 104. Now, with Rustboro City, I'd highly recommend delaying this encounter, unless you absolutely can't. A lot of the encounters here are fantastic, but I have a hard time justifying the trade-off. After Norman, you get access to a weird fossil, which can restore it into one of any random fossil Pokemon. On top of that, if you revive this fossil, it opens up Desert Underpass after Norman. Basically, not delaying Rustboro makes you lose out on an encounter late in the run, and half the time you get Rockruff anyway. Mudbray, Fanpy, Galar Meowth, and Togedemaru are all fantastic though, so depending on your box, it definitely could be a good idea to grab this encounter. 
If you're feeling desperate, the Route 116 trainers are optional before Roxanne, but they're much more difficult if you do them before rather than after getting the second badge. The payoff is nice though, with the potential rare candy being very useful here. The catch, however, is you'd have to fight these two battles without leaving the route to change teams. 99% of the time, I choose to do this after Roxanne, but like I said, if you're desperate enough, it could be worth it. Depending on your team, Roxanne can either be pretty straightforward or an absolute nightmare. On paper, this roster looks insane, with the immediate Zygarde 10% probably catching your attention. Nice rock types, by the way, Roxanne. The Bisharp lead can be mildly problematic, but usually falls to any of the Hitmons, Senescorch, Floatzel, Krabby, and probably a few more Pokemon out there. This usually brings out the dog, and there are a few decent counters to this thing. You can get cheeky by using Eldegoss to drop its speed, and taking it out with an Ice Fang from Dreadnought if it's faster. Or you could use Huntail, Seedra, Octillery, or Celio to dodge a crit and KO. Depending on the IVs and amount of Icicle Spear hits, Shelter's a solid answer to this thing as well. The cool part about Hitmonlee is that it can potentially take down Bisharp, Aurorus, and Lunatone. It's easily one of the best Roxanne rings in the game, and one of the strongest early game mons out there. Aurorus can follow to Hariyama, Togedemaru, Hitmonlee, and Floatzel most of the time, and Karakosta to most grass types. Lunatone is surprisingly checked by a lot of fighting types, and you generally want to avoid using super effective moves on it due to its weakness policy stored power combo. Sometimes you just get hit with the 10% ancient power boost and lose, but that's part of the fun of run and bun. Solrock can be tricky, but the best strategies I've come up with have been pivoting between Masquerade and a Shell Armor Mon, or the classic Rocket We Ball Octillery strategy. Alright, this range, buddy. It's a really good range for you. You're right, Terry, at this. Really, really, really good range. Oh my god. What's up, Cody? Okay, well, I missed the one roll. As if this couldn't get any worse. This is the play now. Yeah, Roxanne has a tiger. Okay, this should be Aurorus. Hopefully this clicks Discharge or something. Okay, this crits me again, that's awesome. Oh wow, uh, that doesn't matter, right? Hopefully I get a bite flinch or something, that'd be pretty sick. Bite flinch, bite flinch, bite flinch, bite flinch, please, please, please. Never lucky. Flinch? Just give me more chances to flinch, man, come on. Never lucky. Oh my, for f sake, that didn't kill. What a low roll, dude. Yeah, I'm gonna lose this 1v1 because my Dreadnought's so bad. Finally, bro. Like, what the f Why don't I ever get good luck? Obviously, if a certain thing happens, we always lose and I go to bed. Cool, okay. So we're kind of in it for now. Okay, that's fine, I'm Chesto. If it misses Hypnosis, that's really good. Nice, let's go, Girder. Yeah, yeah. Cockbane always clutches up with boys. All right, all that's left is Karakasta. Just don't get crit, dude, come on. Okay. This should always be Aqua Jet, which is perfect, exactly. Oh, wait. Okay, I'm only, or I'm not dead to Rocks or Aqua Jet crit. This should always be Aqua Jet though, because it always sees a kill and it's slower. It just needs to not turn one wake up, dude. It's gonna wake up, I know it. I just know it, it always does. It's always the first turn wake up. Yeah, I skilled score. I have no answer for this, so I had to. AP into... Thank you for the love of God, okay. Oh my God, finally, some okay luck. We'll take it. Tired it might be, we're one death. That was scary as f dude. We had no Karakos to answer. 
Yeah, we'll take the luck at the end. Bolton died. The Gower Slowbro skill check on the horizon, Watson split is next, and boy is it a fun one.